All right, so here is the, uh, the so here's the VI from last week uh, with our analog voltage reading um, going to the file. So we want to replace this. Uh, we can leave most of the setup things here. We'll have to change analog channel, um, but the rest of it we can keep mostly the same. So the first thing is to right click here and use a shortcut where we can replace it and it will find similar things. So we can go to Maker Hub, Links, Peripherals, Digital, Pulse Width. So now we've got that going in. It kept analog channel and it wired it in to the input channel. So that's going to be our echo now. We also need the output. This is our trigger. So it can go there. And we also have to tell it to use the trigger, which is what this stimulus pulse thing create constant active high. That says send a positive pulse turning on and then off to trigger the measurement. All right, so I've got my, uh, my front panel arranged a little bit here. I need to change this. This is really the time in microseconds. Um, and now if I run this, I've got it set up for five samples with a thousand milliseconds in between. So it'll take five seconds to run. There it finished. And it gets these readings. The one last thing I'd like to do for this is to put the, the file name on my front panel so I can change it every time really easily without having to click. So if I find, I can, I could double click in here and I could change it up there, but I can also change it here with these inputs. So if I right click on file name, create control, then I can give it a name here. something like that. So I want to make that change and then I'm going to run it. Should get five measurements over five seconds. My mouse hand is in the way here. Um, and if I bring up the directory, uh, view data, test 33, you can see he took five measurements. So that's good. Now the next thing we want to do is we want to be able to put on the front panel what the distance is where we've put the book in front of the sensor. So I'm going to create an indicator here. Sorry, numeric control. That's going to be the distance. Centimeters. I'm going to take that outside of the while loop. It down here. So I want to put this, I want a column of these. So right now I've got just my measurements, but I want the first column to be the known distance and the second column to be the measurements. So for that, I need to copy this this many times, however many samples we have. So that is in initialize array. There's an array block here initialize array, connect that to here, and then this is where I tell it how many copies to make. So I could put a constant there or something, but I'm going to use this one. So I copy it that many times. And now I've got an array here that's this thing copied this many times, so five times right now. And then I want to take this data and stick them together into two columns. So I need a thing called a build array. Let me delete that. Delete that. And I'm going to find here an array. Build array. And this just puts the columns together. And it comes off small like this. So we have to drag the bottom down for as many columns as we want. So two columns this time. 
and I will put it here, here. Uh, I'm going to put this one first. I want it to be on the left. This one second. And then this goes to my spreadsheet. So now I've got orange. These are floating point. These are whole numbers, but that's what comes out of the timer, so that's fine. Um, and it all seems to work out. So I'm going to run this one. Clean this up a little. You can see. Four, three, two, and now I've got zeros and measurements. That's great. So if I actually put a number in here, I'm at 50 centimeters. When I run, then I can go in here, click on this again, and now I've got 50 and the measurement. So this is the kind of data we can plot to do our calibration plot, the known distance and the measured pulse timing. So if you have that, you're in pretty good shape for getting this lab completed.